system. You can have any of the uh, seven microphones connected to the to the to the uh, to the unit. It could be all the same, or they could be all different. It could be any combination of these different seven mics. So the first one is a 12-inch gooseneck microphone, useful for one really one person. If you use this microphone, you really do have to have it one between one, one person, one microphone for for every person. Um, next is a six-inch gooseneck microphone. Slightly smaller, maybe you've got a, a, a big chief who has a 12 inch and then everybody else, all the kind of rest of the people have to have the, the 6 inch microphone, you know. Or you could have any combination that you like. Uh, these are really kind of used for live sound, but they can be used for conferencing as well. Um, next one we have is a Lavalier mic. So people are familiar with these types of microphones. You clip them on. We've got two different versions. We've got a Countryman version, and we also do one which uh, works with the Bayer Dynamic Microphone. Um, depending on what's available in your region, Bayer is fairly wide, widely available. Um, and then we have a wearable mic. So this is a simple wearable mic, just clip it on, clips onto your lanyard or onto your pocket or something, and uh, you know, it's a close microphone ideal for kind of live environments or um, or conferencing works just as well uh, the next mic we have and I don't have a microphone for it hey John we got a Yamaha oh, you want a Yamaha uh, yeah so here we have our dynamic adapter basically it will turn any dynamic microphone into a wireless microphone so here we go put on your dynamic mic Turn it on, start talking. Uh, great for question and answer type environments or even conferencing. Excellent microphone choice for live presentation. The other microphones are really desktop microphones, so useful for conferencing. Wouldn't use them really in a live environment because of the, the feedback that you're going to get off of them. And this is a directional microphone, cardioid pattern. This one's a omnidirectional microphone pattern so um, you know it's about choosing the correct microphone for the installation that's the important thing so we can order for any combination or yes when you when you buy the receiver it comes without any microphones at all and what you do is you choose which microphones you want all the other components come with the system so the antenna is here that comes with the system over the coverage you know it's uh, yeah within this uh, coverage okay so the, the the antenna is on a cat5 cable and it's powered over ethernet so you don't need to power it locally it gets its power straight off the back of the unit you can put that antenna anywhere up to 100 meters away from the receiver um, and then you ideally put it in the middle of the space which you want to cover with the power the maximum power it will transmit to is 90 meters so that is the microphone can be 90 meters away from the antenna at its maximum distance okay you can limit that down if you need to and the reason you might want to limit that down is if you have multiple systems close together you might want to kind of keep the density of the microphones down so if you only wanted to cover this particular space then you just have the power set to uh, 3 meters or 12 meters, whatever kind of works. That way you could have multiple rooms and you have minimized the density. Okay. In the managed system, system audio, we can determine how much bandwidth we apply to the microphones, depending on what the application is. So HD is our maximum bandwidth, that's to each of the microphones, and it's just in one direction, that is we send from the microphone to the receiver. If we go to SD, we limit that down. It means that we can use more microphones, up to 76 microphones, and we halve the bandwidth that they're using. Um, maybe if you're only doing something like telephone conferencing, you don't really need an awful lot of bandwidth, and therefore you can have more microphones uh, using less bandwidth. Question about the output now. So we can use, instead of any, any vendor, the yes. output speaker, Yes, okay. Revolab is partners with all vendors, I think, okay. most vendors. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that bit in a moment. Let me, um, let me cancel that. So you set up your levels on your microphone here if you want to, or you can, or you can go on to your DSP. 
Um, if I show you the DSP we're using here, we're coming in on these channels here. So we're using AVB here. Um, what we do is we take this AVB manager and we're routing our outputs to those inputs. So all we're doing is we're going via a switch here. We're taking a Cat5 cable out the back, going into the switch and effectively matrixing those outputs to those inputs here. You could select any, but I'm just going input, output one, input one, output two, input two. You know, it's really quite simple. Once you've set up that connection, you can disconnect it. You don't need to connect it again because the routing is set. Okay? Then that presents those inputs on the front end of the of the Tessera in this case. We're using eight AVB inputs, but you could have up to 128 inputs on that device. This will take 128 inputs with the new firmware they're about to release. At the moment, it'll do a maximum of 16, um, but it's, uh, I think it's imminent, the, the release that supports up to 128 channels. In this particular instance, all I'm doing is I'm mixing this, and it's really for the demonstration for here, um, but I could use my matrix mixer to to take all those inputs individually. Um, there's 12 echo cancellation inputs on that as well, um, which can have custom AEC modes. I think when I look at the projects that you've done, you're not really using echo cancellation. It's probably not. If you're using it for live environments, you don't need echo cancellation. Uh, it's only really for conferencing environments. But you can set your noise reduction. You can decide what type of algorithm you want to use in terms of the the yeah, cancellation and then you can set up your own as you like so all these things are ultimately configurable and, where and do you adjustable. use echo cancellation only for conferencing environments so audio conferencing or video conferencing only you wouldn't want to use it in any other not echo cancellation okay so then on each of the channels you've got a parametric eq and you can set the equalization of each through microphone on the input and you can change these, you can change how many bands are active on it. Uh, the gain of this, obviously that's the height of these. And these you can drag and drop your own points. Uh, or you can flatten it all if you don't like it. Um, very, very flexible EQ on these inputs. It'll also take an, a, a USB input. So if you're doing something like uh, Skype, uh, and you want an eight microphone system directly into the Skype interface, you can use this to do it. And it's all built in, comes complete, comes included. The other thing it's got is a VoIP in interface as well on this particular box. Um, you can actually set up two different SIP circuits onto this unit, uh, individual SIP circuits. Um, and then you can control that via a uh, a dialer interface, which I think is down here. <laughs> so this is just basically a dial button, you make your call, connect your call up, simple as that. Uh, very simple device. But for your kind of, kind of thing, what you probably do is you take your AVB inputs and you straight, put them straight into a parametric and then run it into a kind of matrix mixer. These blocks can be constructed however you like. If I take this one offline for a moment, then I can go into the into the different blocks. Uh, I need my layout bar. Have the bar. Yes. Okay, right, so here's where I create my blocks. Um, it's where I say I want a matrix mixer. Q Pick that, how many inputs? 48 by 48 if I wanted it. I mean, okay, obviously I've only got physically 12 inputs and eight outputs on the device in terms of analog. So that's the maximum number I can go to because I have, physically don't have the, the outputs. But if I want to do AVB, I can create as many as I want. But so for, so for argument's sake, I'm going to stick with the matrix mixer that's here. This is a 14 by 11 which is 14 inputs by 11 outputs. So once I get my, my inputs, I, I route them to whatever outputs I want. So if you get the situation, say you had four speaker zones in a, in a room, 
I could take any of those inputs and route certain ones to certain speakers and I can leave some out. And then, on the other side, I can create the game, how much level I send to each of those speakers. So, for instance, if I, on my output block, if I wanted to run this into eight separate amplifiers to run eight separate speakers, I could not only decide what of my microphones goes to what speakers, I can also EQ each of them and I can set the level on each of them as well. It's very flexible in designing it room systems. It's what scenario when you want to send different levels of different microphones in a room? Um, Say, so for instance, um, I have a room whereby it's set out where one of the speakers is sitting right under that microphone. He doesn't need to be heard, so therefore I drop the level on that. Okay. Yeah, I keep the level down and I bring up the level further away. So the closer to him is the lower the level I drop on that microphone, and the further I got away is the more I'd increase that. So, for instance, if I was if I look at the output side of that, if I look at my output channels, if, for instance, on channel one was sitting over top of my lectern, then I could take that level right down. And this one, which is the clo next closest, take that one down, next closest, take that one down, but the others I keep up high and high. So at the back of the room, where it's going to be the least heard, I keep the level nice and high, but as I come forwards, I drop it down. Yeah? That's where you would use that kind of scenario. And in terms of connectivity behind, um, analog and SVB? Okay, so, so if I look at the back end of this box. Okay, so I've got 12 analog inputs here. So I can take 12 microphones on this particular block uh, and they appear here on these 12 inputs. Okay. If I look at that block, I can turn phantom power on and off on those blocks, and I can set the gain of the microphones at this point as well. Yeah? So this is where I set the gain of the, of the channel and I set the phantom power. And then it goes into a processing block. Um, and again, you can choose what processing blocks you want to use. Uh, you know, input blocks, this is how you create your, you can start with nothing and just create the, the system that you want. There's no fixed routing or, or, or blocks within the unit. You could delete the whole thing and build your own and it'll just compile it exactly how you want to do it. And right now you are straight through AVP from one device to the other or you're still using a switch? Yeah, so underneath I've got a switch. Okay. Um, so, I mean, at the moment I'm, I'm using an extreme switch which is sitting there. That's an um, extreme switch, ABB. But I mean, just the same, we could use this. It's like a, a Motu switch. Um, it does five, five channels. It's the maximum it'll do, so you maximum of five devices can be attached to it. But I mean, you know, it's made by a company in America, in Boston. It's even made in America. One of the last things that but is. But you cannot use a normal switch. You can't use a normal switch for ABB. It has to be ABB. But that, I mean, that's. Uh, I bought that in the UK. Trade price is 180 quid, 180 pounds. So it's not an expensive. So the the most cost-effective switch you can buy for ABB. Um, and if you're not using more than four, five devices, it's it's uh, perfectly good for doing that. And to say you, the retail price of that's about 300 dollars. So, you know, nice and simple. Really, isn't complicated. If we do analog, it is just. Yeah. So, if I was to use the analog output of this, I just take the analog output number one, go to analog input number one, two to two, three to three, three to four, and then these are my eight outputs here. So I can send those to any any sort, any any. Um, device so I could send it to an amplifier, I could send it to a video codec, I could send it to an audio codec. Um, depends what you want to do with it. If you're just using you know live sound reinforcement, I'd I'd, I'd zone eight speakers in uh, across my my area um, and, and just drive them individually. That's the way 
I would design a system. I'd never design a system with a single point of speakers, ever. Because you've always got to kind of either have it really loud at the front and the people at the back, are, you know, it's quiet for, um, or it's not loud enough, or you can't control the level. So, you know, you always kind of spread the audio as, as kind of, as, as, as evenly across your audience as you possibly can, and then control the level from the blocks. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. And here you can create routing and you can, you can effectively set up a mix minus. So, you know, you exclude if you want to, your microphone from a certain group of speakers you want to send to. I mean, if I, if I were to take these as my, these are my outputs, so I take these eight outputs here, which are represented here, and I can say, right, this microphone I want to send to one, but I don't want to send it to two. I do want to send it to three, four, five, six, not seven, but I want to send it to eight. So you could just set up your routing, first of all. And once you set your routing, then you can set your levels. Yeah, so you route, it, route what you want to send where, and then you set all your levels up around it. I mean, that's the proper way to do it. Yeah. Cool. And that's about it, really. Uh, 